up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great, and I mean great, Thirsty Thursday. I am here at the Red Brick House. Going to try and see if we can see what we got on this floor up underneath of here. And I can't believe that it's already happening. I can't believe that it's already happening that Kellen Moore is <coughs> coughing before the dusting stuff. <coughs> that Kellen Moore is already on the hot seat. See, here's the thing. That's interesting. And I, I didn't even realize it until I was watching ESPN this morning. Shout out to ESPN for letting me know something I didn't know already. Um, apparently, okay, we know that Justin Herbert, you know, Justin Herbert, who is a top five quarterback, better than Dak Prescott, even though he lost to Dak Prescott. But be that as it may, we've been told that he's better than Dak, that he is the bomb diggity, he's the future of the NFL, one of these great young quarterbacks. And they've been telling us that with, Kellen Moore as the offensive coordinator. Kellen Moore, the guy who's made Dak Prescott. Kellen Moore, the boy genius that he is going to thrive and you're going to see incredible things because the Dallas Cowboys, they had the number one scoring offense when Dak Prescott was there. They scored a lot of points. So why would the Dallas Cowboys, in their, their right mind, get rid of that guy? Because... We've been told how stupid the Cowboys organization is and Jerry Jones and crew, right? Okay, here's what's interesting. The Chargers scored a whole bunch of points and went to overtime against the Tennessee Titans. Tennessee, Tennessee, with Ryan Tannehill and a Derrick Henry that just, just looks kind of like, he's not O. Henry, he's not Derrick Henry, he's just a Henry right now as far as running football. A team that really just can't score a whole lot of points. They get into overtime. Into overtime, right? And what does Kellen Moore do? First down. Deep pass. Second down. Deep pass. Third down. Deep pass. Punt the ball. Tennessee goes down, runs pass, runs pass, so on, mixes it up, gets the field goal range, and wins the game. And I need to say, well, okay, so, you know, they couldn't complete the three passes. That's the problem. Keller Moore is always going for the jugular. No, no, don't paint that one, honey. Oh, that one's going to go upstairs. That's for the, the, the sample. Okay. All right. So, um, lost my train of thought there for a second. So, here's the problem. Sometimes you need to be a little more conservative and take what the defense gives you. It's not pretty, it's not great stats, but take a look at what happened with um, Josh Allen week one, going against the Jets. He kept going for the deep ball, right? Going deep. And it ended up failing. Ended up being interceptions. Hmm. The next week, they play a little more conservative. They stopped trying to just chuck it up in the air and going passing it every down. More balanced. They score a lot of points, they blow the opposition out. That's the problem with Kellen Moore. Kellen Moore is always going down deep, too predictable. And I dare say, this, this is the other problem I will say too, because this is Jason Garrett-esque. And by Jason Garrett-esque, I mean, so many times we've been great in regular season, but when crunch time happens, when it's now, everything's on the line, when all the pressure builds up, when you're literally making diamonds in your ass because your butt cheeks are <clears throat> cushioned up, yeah, you, you put a lump of coal in there, you're going to make a diamond. That's the time that it seems like you're lost. The other part of the equation is, is here. And this is where it's also key too, is instead of these slow developing plays that the offensive linemen have pulled up for longer, instead of it taking so long to get the plays out there, where the quarterback is in line of scrimmage and he's hurried up to go through. If you'll remember Peyton Manning, Peyton Manning getting up there 
you know, Omaha, Omaha, you know, let's get some steaks and beer and party, and, you know, being up there making all these calls and doing all these fake stuff. At some point, the defense is going to show you what they're doing. They can't hide everything. Somebody's going to end up leaning one way or the other as you start doing all this motion and stuff in there. And then you, as the quarterback, know where they're going, and it's that much easier. You can go away from them, and you're going to make bigger plays. This is the difference of Mike McCarthy calling the plays. The Wiley veteran. We were sold a bill of goods that Mike McCarthy just fell off the salad truck. He can't call plays. You know, now they're trying to say, well, now he's going to try and do clock manage as well. Here's the thing you got to understand. First of all, Mike McCarthy isn't calling plays in a vacuum where it's just him and, 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 and his mind and all that and trying to do all this stuff. He's not. This is by committee. This is where you got Brian Schottenheimer, who's working the, during the week, figuring out the plays, the weaknesses, the scouting department, and all that. You've got all these people working together to get all the information. And then you've got Mike um, McCarthy there, able to try and decipher it. You know, they're going to be making play calls by committee, and it'll be direct input. Now, you're probably going to say, well, why did Mike McCarthy do that with Kellen Moore? Because he didn't like Kellen Moore. He didn't want to do this with Kellen Moore. He wanted full autonomy because if it didn't work with Kellen Moore and the next thing Kellen Moore goes to Jerry because that's the anointed one and says, well, Mike McCarthy's messing me up. He's not allowing me to be the guy I want to be. And the reverse is true that if it fails, then Mike McCarthy is going to end up being, you know, it's Kellen Moore. It's like, no, you're the head coach. You're the one that's out of here. So he had to let Kellen Moore fail and let that come to light in order to get all the power that he really wanted and needed to be able to do it the way he's doing. And I love the Texas Coast offense. It's quick hitting, you're getting to the line of scrimmage quickly, you're getting <clears throat> time to make the calls, you're not getting delay of games. <coughs> and even with having had two injuries on the offensive line, the offensive line is not having the problems that you had before because that, Hey, see what that, people you, you gotta make all that noise your car while I'm trying to trying to video here. They're doing great things. So anyway, speaking of great things, I got a floor in here I'm gonna be sanding. Um, I may go ahead and do it live on my other channel because you know this is gonna be major because I have no idea how this floor is gonna look. But you know, if it looks anything like the other floors and stuff in there when it's sanded, it's gonna be great. Because take a look at it. Doesn't that look good? Look at that. Doesn't that shit look good? You saw it when it was, how it was before? You saw it. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. You saw it before. It looked like ass ass. Now, it's pretty. All right, we're going to make it even prettier. All right, I'll see you guys a little bit later after I say in the floor. Peace.